Hello and welcome to the MXQ project. Today I want to show you how to install LibreLack onto an SD card to boot from an MXQ box. Now we can do this and actually install it onto the NAND flash on the box, but today I'm just going to show you how to boot it from the SD card tray. I want to actually find it. There we, oh, there we go, <laughs> just on the side there. Yeah, just, uh, so we're going to use an SD card, we're going to pop it into the side, and we're going to boot a whole operating system from that. SD card tray. Now we need to prepare the SD card first, so we're going to need a few files. Obviously, you're going to need your SD, you're going to need a computer, and then you're going to need KZAX LibreLack build for the MXQ SF5, and you're going to need Win32 Disk Imager. Really simple systems to use, and I'll show you exactly how to use them now. So, as you can see on screen, we need to go to a few websites first. We need to go to kzak.librolec.tv forward slash S805. Now if you happen to have an S905, there is actual build of this for your box, which I'll probably cover in another video. All you need to do is put S905 at the end of that. So this is um, where all the files are stored. This is by Kzak. Now he's the guy who develops and maintains this for the MXQ box. He's doing a fantastic job. And without him, we would not have Krypton available for the system. So, to understand this, 7.0.3.3 is Jarvis. So, if you want to run Jarvis, that's fine. You can go into there. And you can go to SD or update, and all the files there are for booting it. Dual booting it from SD card. It's just in here. But, I want to show you how to use Krypton. So, we need to go to 8.0.0.b. So, if you go in there, you'll see a whole bunch of files. Now the HD18Q is the one we're going to use, but that's the one mainly associated with these sort of boxes, the all black MXQ box. Now you may have a B-Link one, and that has a red stripe across it, and it also has a power button in the middle of it. It's a totally different shape, but it looks very similar to this, but it's quite a bit different. Of course it's made by B-Link and the motherboard, which this one here, this is not... This is the HD 80Q board and the Nexion made ones which is in the building could look a little bit different. Now you probably notice at the bottom of that file list is uh, one called an M201D. Now that looks very similar to these, actually looks probably identical, but they shipped with half a gig of RAM and that's what that's aimed at. Boxes for half a gig of RAM. So download the one appropriate for your box, the chances are you've got HD 80Q. There's also a good chance you've maybe got um, a B-Link version of it. So, just depends what you've got. Download the file. Now, you'll notice they're all compressed as well. GZ files, so make sure you've got 7-zip or some or some sort of unzipper to make so you can uncompress the file. Um, so, once you've done that, download the file, unzip it, and then we'll move on to the next part. So, what you're going to need is you're going to need Win32 Disk Imager. Now, you can download that from anywhere on the internet. Just type in Google. I'm not doing now for you actually. So if I go to Google, let's type in Win32, and it comes up straight away. And there we go. That's SourceForge. That's a really trusted website, and you can download it from there. Just a really simple file, it's really small, it only takes two seconds to download it, and it's just an executable as well. So you can download it from now, you can download download it from us from our home. So it's mxqproject.com forward slash files. And at the bottom you'll see Win32 disk and you can just um, download it there. So once you've got that, let's go back to the desktop desktop and we've got our two file our well I've got two here, so I've got the the um, Jarvis file, um, we don't need that, so I'll move that to one side. So we've got the Krypton file here, so that's um, LibreLec 8.0, and that's running Krypton. And we've got our Win32 disk imager, so click on it and then allow it to open. And what it'll do is, really simple executable program just here. And all you got to do is click on here, in the section, and then choose the file that you want to burn. So obviously we want to burn the 8.0 file. Click on it and click open. Now 
this would probably be a good time to insert the SD card into your computer. Now, because my Windows 7 PC is a pain, I have to redo all this. So I'll close it and reload it. And there we go. So it needs to recognize your, your SD card just on the side there. So I'll select my file again. And once you've done that, so you've got now made sure you've got your SD card and recognized by Win32 Disk Imager, and you've selected your file. Make sure it's unzipped as well before you do any of this. Make sure it's a dot image file. If it's a dot image dot gz, then you've gone wrong and you need to uncompress it using the programs I was talking about. I'll probably leave a link to in the description as well to Win Seven Zip and stuff like that. And then once you've done all that, all you need to do is click right and then confirm it. And it, it won't take long. Uh, make sure you've got a decent SD card as well. The one I'm using at the moment says SanDisk Extreme. They're quite expensive, about 15, 20 quid in my country, depending on what size you want. That's quite a big card, that. Um, but if you go for a, a, an 8 gigabyte SanDisk Ultra card, they're about, about 6 quid. If that, sometimes there's some good deals on them. They can get them as cheap as £4. eBay and Amazon have got some good deals on them as well. So make sure you've got a Class 10 card as well. Those cards I was talking about, they're Class 10. If you get something like class 4 it will work but clear brogak it does run like crap so don't bother with that so once you've written successfully we can now move over to the tv now because we we can't really show you anything more on the computer because you're pretty much done you can check your sd card out so that's now got libra burnt onto it so what we're going to do is we're going to move over to the tv and we're going to insert into the mxq box i want to show you how to actually do the initial first boot Okay, so this is probably the easiest part of the whole task. So, you've got your MXQ box. Now, make sure it's plugged into HDMI, it just makes things a bit simpler. Grab your SD card, what we prepared. And on the side of the MXQ, just in the SD card tray, pop your SD card in. Now on the back, you have an AV port and an SPDIF port. Inside the AV port is a little reset button. Get something thin and sharp. And just pop it in. As you can see, I'm using a cocktail stick. Whatever you use, it doesn't really matter. And then feel for a click. That's your button in there, which tells the hardware to boot from the SD card. Hold that in, and then we can apply power. Now keep it held in. Apply power. And eventually, it's going to boot your first splash screen. And there we have it. In the top left hand corner we've got the initial first boot happening. And then it says there as well in about 15 seconds it's going to reboot. So the great thing about Librogek is it gives you a tutorial of how to set up, how to set up Wi-Fi and everything else. And that's at the very start. So it's about to launch to that right now. So this is, like I said before, this is we're going to be running Cody Krypton 17.1. And there we have it. So the next last thing for you to do is just follow the guide just on there, just on the written guide. Set it up however you like and then you can proceed to use Cody however which way you want to. So that concludes our guide. Hopefully that was pretty simple. If you do get stuck, you can come and visit us on the MXQ project. We've got a written guide on there as well. Our Facebook group as well, the MXQ project. I'll leave all the links in the description for all those. Or the forum, you can come and check us out on there. Now, this is I'm pretty still pretty new to YouTube, so if you did find this useful, please give me a thumbs up. Um, leave a comment if you got stuck or anything like that. And do, do let me know if I'm doing things well or if I'm missing things out or anything like that. Because again... I am new to YouTube, so give me a chance and we'll hopefully get some really good uh, tutorials put together for you guys. So, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you get some use out of um, dual boot in your MXQ box and we shall see you on the next tutorial.